What's up everyone? This is a familiar sight. We're back here at Carter's house. Carter's did a couple upgrades on the car and uh, since I've been gone, Carter kind of made the joke too. He thought I stopped doing YouTube, but we're back. And unfortunately, as soon as I got here, it looks like it's about to start raining. This might be a two part, not a two part video, but like a, a video, one video within two days or something like that. Cause uh, we're trying to get some work done right now, but it, it's, it's, it's coming down right now, dude. I can feel the rain coming. Uh, so let's show you what's going on, what's on the agenda in case we don't finish it all today. So Carter's got his headlights in, the black housings. Now now the car is coming together. We just had to take this fender off because we decided to run uh, the fan switch wiring through uh, this fender. Kind of like how we did the headlight harness on this side. And to be honest with you guys, I don't remember if we showed you. But uh, the headlight harness did run originally in this corner so now we took that grommet out we're going to put a rubber o-ring here so you don't see the red but it does run into the fender now comes this way connects to the headlight here I, yeah you can kind of see it here's our harness so it, it'll there was a ground back here somewhere connects to the headlight runs this way you can see it running behind the crash bar here comes to the other headlight uh, we have it grounded here this is the fan switch wiring which we're going to be uh, you know tidying up this is just to, to check it and uh, yeah so that's that's how that's all wired up today's objective we're actually going to be doing a custom charge harness so the charge harness consists of his uh, alternator plug his starter well not plug his cable alternator cable starter cable uh, positive battery cable and the fuse box cable so I'm going to show you guys how to make your own custom charge harness so you don't have to try to find a used one if you're doing like a, a, a case swap or something and we're also going to be installing a uh, AEM oil pressure sensor just kind of like how we did on my car Carter's doing it the same exact way he's bought the k-tuned uh, oil sensor adapter kit right here so there's your part number this is just a block you guys seen it I'll leave a link down below of how I did it but you'll see a quick run through on how we're doing it on his car and uh, that's hoping like I said we could beat the rain and um, what else did you say? Oh, we're gonna drill your IAT. I mean, that's simple. We're just gonna put a hole right here so you can put his uh, IAT sensor in. And um, I don't know if we're gonna get it started just because of the way the rain is looking. But uh, we're just gonna try to get some wiring done right now. So it just started raining as we were uh, finishing up plumbing, not plumbing, but installing the uh, block for the sensor on his block. So we're probably gonna cut this right after this uh, clip but I want to show you guys what it looks like because when I did it in my RSX it was really hard to see so we took the VTEC solenoid out and you can get a better look of how how the setup works when you use the K-Tune block with an oil pressure sensor okay so hopefully you guys can see that pretty well so I'm trying to hold the harness out of the way this is our AEM uh, pressure sending unit this is the OEM sending or the oil pressure sending unit and then this right here is the K-Tune uh, block that you screw in to where the original OEM sending unit went and then you just put a couple block offs around the rest of the block just because we're not using those so this is how this setup looks all we would do now is grab the uh, the AEM plug and we would uh just for a quick plug in right here we would just plug this in okay so we plug that one in then we get the uh, OEM pressure sending unit plug plug that in put that over so then that's what your setup looks like now. We have the wiring going inside the car through the um, the uh, wire harness routing. So this is the uh, AEM cable right here. And that's it, you're pretty much done here. So now we're just gonna put the VTEC solenoid on here and uh, we're done in the engine bay. Then everything else is done inside the car to grab your power, your ground, and uh, where you're gonna put the, uh, the gauge. All right guys, we're back here at Carter's house. So whatever you just saw in the last clip i honestly don't remember at this moment when i'm doing the editing of this video i'm sure i'm gonna see if i repeated myself or not but i'm gonna start off to where we left off i'm gonna try at least so this whole video is basically showing you guys how to do your own charge harness so there is going to be other things thrown into this video like we're probably going to wire up his uh his aem oil pressure gauge and stuff like that but the main premise of this video is wiring up your charge harness so the last time I was here, I don't think I did a good enough job explaining it. If I'm repeating myself, you can just skip through a little bit. So I'm gonna start all over again. When creating your own charge harness, you need to uh, basically run wiring from your starter 
your alternator. Those two wires need to run to some sort of uh, distribution block. So we're putting the distribution block under his fuse box. So what the distribution block does is exactly what it sounds like. It distributes the power to everything you run to it. So the main battery cable runs to the block. So that's how you're getting your 12 volts. So your positive of the battery runs to the block. There's your 12 volts. And then everything else that's connected to that distribution block sends the 12 volts to everything else. So it'll send it to the fuse box, send it to the alternator, send it to the starter. So what we already did was we ran cables from his alternator and his starter, tucked them up his frame into the chassis. I'll show you guys how we did that. And uh, basically now we have the alternator and the starter wire waiting inside the chassis. And I'm going to briefly go over, I mean, I'll leave a link where when I did my battery relocation, I went real in depth on how to uh, basically make your own cables. But I'm going to go over pretty quickly just to explain to you guys how we're doing it again. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your cable. You're going to find the length that you need. So you're going to cut the length that you need, get the right terminal that you need. Once you have the right terminal, you're going to strip a little bit. Uh, we'll strip the length of what you need for that terminal. Strip that off, put your terminal on. Once you got your terminal on, you use some sort of crimper, any crimper that you can find, or even a bench vise if you don't have a crimper. Crimp that together, and then uh, slide some heat shrink over it. Or if you already, sl I should have said, slide the heat shrink on the cable first before you crimp it. Heat your, your, heat your heat shrink up. Once that's all heated, you do the opposite side to whatever you're running it to, and that's how you make a basic cable. So charge harness is, or well, not charge harness, Power wire is going to be next after we do this, and then we're going, you have a battery, right, Carter? Yeah, so we'll just mock the battery down so we can get the length of the positive side of the battery. For the negative side, he has the hybrid racing uh, grounding kit, so we didn't have to make that. And that's it, that's literally how you make a charge harness. All right, guys, so here's everything pretty much finished up. Here's his batteries in there, his fuse box wires. This is, we're gonna, we're gonna work on it a little bit. We still have to push this down. This is just testing purposes, though, but uh, mm -hmm. underneath, you can see the distribution block, the way everything is wired up. So now we have one more spot left on the back right here. And that's for our positive cable that we just made. So we again, we're using black wiring. So we, what we ended up doing was just putting some red heat shrink on this end. And the positive terminal also has uh, the positive sign right here. But this is just a quick glance. So, I mean, I don't think anybody else is working on this car. Carter knows. This is the positive side with red here. Heat shrink that there. So this is going to go... Probably what we're thinking from here all the way around this way. Now this was a pre-cut section that I had. This was like extra two gauge. So I'm not 100% sure, or I wasn't sure if it was gonna reach all the way. I thought that was enough, but when we laid it out, it's like barely coming to this end. So we're not sure. Hopefully I'm thinking it's gonna fit. I mean, it's gonna be tight, but if I have to, I'll get some more two gauge. And um, yeah, let me, I'll just tell you guys what we're doing, positive side two gauge cable so when you're doing a positive side cable you do two gauge on the positive side the whole charge harness so fuse box wiring alternator starter that's all eight gauge wiring and this is hybrid racing's their ground this looks like a four gauge maybe because it's bigger than our eight but it's smaller than our two so i think this is the four this is a four gauge i would have done two gauge on the ground but four is fine and uh, we're gonna let that cool off and throw it on. It can be loud. All right, all right. So, uh, all right, here we go. Now, unfortunately, this is not long enough. So this is gonna be temporary. We're gonna have to get a new one of these, remake that, probably remake some of these other ones because I can make these like a little shorter. We can make some other on the bottom a little longer, but this is going to be for testing purposes. And uh, Carter is going to turn the key. I don't wanna do that. Why not? Don't you wanna see if you got power? Yeah, but like, what if it just kicks on and it's just all dry in there? It's not gonna kick on. Oh. All you gotta do is flip the accessory. So hang on, hang on. Here, you know what, here, I'll let you take that boot off and we'll see if we hear a click. Go ahead, plug your positive in. Um, wait, should we tighten all this down? Because I, I tightened it by, you're not starting nothing. I just wanna see if you got power going places. I just don't want to plug it up and all of a sudden everything just starts turning it's over. It's not gonna turn over. Yeah, hi, man. It's not gonna, you're gonna be good. You're gonna be good, just touch it first. You're good, bro. You're good. Just put it on. I didn't hear nothing click, so... What is that? What's it clicking? I would have liked to heard like a relay click or something. All right. So, I mean, and also, all you got to do is stick the key in the ignition, and it should, like, start beeping because you got the my, door open. My thing is iffy on that sometimes. All right. Well, let's see. 
Oh, I see blinkers. Oh, you got power. Oh, so we don't have to do that? I mean, like, I guess not. What's that noise? That's the next door. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man, you have power. Let's see, put, put, do something else again. I've got no key in there. That ain't gonna go on. You had the hazards on. Oh, power. Power. Here we go. <laughs> Car is too afraid to do anything else. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. We, uh, you guys saw, we initially, we had power. We had everything, and now we don't have any power. So after doing some diagnosing, we've been diagnosing for about like a, close to an hour already trying to figure out what happened. It's like an on and off intermittent situation. I think we're missing a ground somewhere. So Carter has an extra ground from the hybrid racing kit. It's just, we don't have it here right now. Carter has to get ready to go to work. So what the? I don't know. Are you on the phone? Oh. That's what I'm hearing. Carter's on the phone. So um, what we're going to do now, we're cleaning up. Carter's got to ready, get ready to go to work. He's got to pick up that ground that he had at the other location. So we're going to leave it here. I think we're missing the ground. You guys got the idea how to create your own charge harness. Now, the reason why I think we're missing a ground or why I know it's not the charge harness because we have 12 volts going to, uh, to our fuse box. We have 12 volts going everywhere, but... When we're checking our ground side, so meaning we put a positive lead on the on the positive battery on the positive post, and then we put the negative lead on like the engine block or something. We're seeing six volts, seven volts. It's not carrying the ground, so it's not traveling. Put another ground. That should fix it, and uh, we'll do that in the next video. But you guys figure it out. You guys know how to do it. How to make your own charge harness. That's fine, and uh, we'll pick this up in the next video, guys. Please give this video a thumbs up, a like. Subscribe if you're new. We'll finish the AM oil pressure gauge in the next video too or whenever we get a chance. We just need to make sure we got constant power going on. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay motivated and keep making those shoots loud.